In the later stages of World War I, Germany was constantly trying to crack the code of the Allied tank army. After understanding their basic performance, the German army developed various counterattack weapons specifically targeted at these newly introduced steel monsters. The MG-18 heavy machine gun was one of them and was considered the tank killer of the time. However, it appeared too late to have any significant impact on the war. The origin of the MG-18 heavy machine gun can be traced back to the German Army's initial use of K and S ammunition. These two types of 7.92 meters ammunition were proven to cause damage to tank armor. Following this line of thought, a larger caliber heavy machine gun was developed to fire specialized armor-piercing rounds, which would cause fatal damage to tanks. In October 1917, the War Department announced a bidding competition to find an automatic weapon capable of firing the new 13.25 BAP S92 Miminil SR ammunition. This new design of ammunition was proven to easily penetrate the 10mm thick steel armor of early tanks. Six companies participated in the bidding, and after a series of tests, the design by MAN Company was officially adopted by the German Army on August 13, 1918. The MG-18 is essentially an enlarged version of a water-cooled heavy machine gun. It uses a short recoil principle and a toggle lock structure, and can only fire in automatic mode. Similar to a regular water-cooled heavy machine gun, it has a large water-cooled jacket and a double-grip structure. It uses a 30 or 75 round belt for ammunition. Due to its flat trajectory and long range, it could also be used as an anti-aircraft machine gun during World War I. Strangely, the German army specified the use of a 75 round belt for anti-tank missions and a 30 round belt for anti-aircraft operations perhaps considering tanks to be a greater threat than aircraft. Because the gun is too heavy to be easily carried by manpower like an infantry heavy machine gun, it is mounted on a wheeled carriage and can be towed by horses or motor vehicles. The entire equipment weighs 133.7 kilograms and requires six soldiers to operate. The barrel of the MG-18 heavy machine gun is shorter than that of the Mauser 1918 anti-tank rifle, but they have the same caliber and interchangeable ammunition. When firing armor-piercing rounds, the muzzle velocity of the MG-18 decreases to 550 meters per second compared to 785 meters per second for the anti-tank rifle. Although the muzzle velocity is reduced, the lethality of the projectile is still considerable. It can penetrate 20 millimeters thick surface-hardened steel armor at a distance of 100 meters and 15 millimeter thick armor at a distance of 300 meters. This is sufficient to deal with most tanks encountered on the battlefield during World War I. The performance of the MG-18 heavy machine gun during World War I was undoubtedly excellent. If it could be mass-produced, it would have caused fatal damage to the Allied tank forces and potentially affected the course of the war, similar to small-caliber rapid-fire cannons. However, the MG-18 came into existence too late. Just three months after being adopted by the Army, Germany surrendered. During this period, only 50 guns were produced, and the MG-18 was restricted by the Treaty of Versailles after Germany's surrender, preventing further upgrades and improvements. The 50 guns that were already produced did not reach the front lines for combat. Therefore, there are no records of its performance in actual combat, and its performance can only be analyzed through test data. Looking at the tank capabilities during World War I, the early diamond-shaped tank armor had a thickness of only 6 mm of boiler steel, which was completely unable to withstand the MG-18's barrage. Another tank, the FT-17 light tank, which is hailed as the precursor to modern tanks, had stronger armor with a maximum thickness of 22 mm on the front. However, the side and rear armor were still only 6 mm thick, under appropriate tactical conditions, the MG-18 could still cause effective damage. The problem with the MG-18 was that it appeared too late. By this time, not only was the situation for the German army already irreparable, but the war had also depleted Germany's industrial strength, making large-scale production impossible. 
After the war, heavy machine guns like the MG-18 still had development potential, such as extending into anti-aircraft machine guns or heavy machine guns for armored vehicles. However, due to complex historical reasons, their development came to an end. 